On today's show, the story of a sculptor. Bud Berger chose bronze as his medium. We help you get started in the growing sport of rock climbing. And we introduce you to a hidden spot where airplanes take flight from water, thanks to this guy. Minnesota Bound, presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hello, everybody. Laura and I welcome you to the show. Up first, the story about Bud Burger, half of Burger Brothers' Minnesota retail legacy. You know, it turns out selling outdoor equipment wasn't Bud's only goal in life. He has a creative side, too. Our story begins in Edina, Minnesota, 44th in France the year 1970. It was 5,000 square feet. Hence, the doors opened to Burger Brothers Sporting Goods. So we had this grand opening, and I think the first day of our grand opening, we did $700 in business. And Teddy and I thought, well, yeah, that's pretty good. The rest is history. Burger Brothers grew to become a familiar name to tens of thousands of Minnesota shoppers. If you needed something, anything, to hunt, fish, camp, you could find it at Burger Brothers. We had six stores with 400 employees, an independent operation like ours. The merchandise that we stocked was better best for quality, for price points, because that's what our customers were looking for. It's fair to say most store customers also thought they were seeing double. The Burger Brothers, Ted and Bud, are identical twins who most often wore identical beards and clothing and shared identical interests, hunting and fishing. As twins, they also experienced ESP, extrasensory perception. We've been hunting deer in Northern Minnesota and we pick out different deer stands that neither one of us know where the other one's hunting, other than that we all in a general area. And at noon, I can walk right to his deer stand. Then it was over. Burger Brothers was no more. I thought, well, maybe we should and move on to another challenge. Soon after, the two brothers also disappeared from the Twin Cities. They reside here on a remote wooded property near Bemidji where the brothers and their wives live in separate log cabin homes, stuffed with a lifetime of memories of field. And we moved up here around 2002. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I had an idea because we had built this long home. I'm gonna create some decor. Bud Berger was unaware, a dormant but amazing artistic talent was about to lead him and his wife, Jan, on a new life's journey. Mirrors are great decorative interior design items to feature in a home. And I thought, you know, if I do one to three dimensional relief on a mirror frame, so I started doing that. And one thing led to another, then people wanted to buy them. That was exciting because he retired and he never really retired because he always had this in the back of his mind. And the more he talked about it, the more it sounded like something he should do. One thing it led to was an art shop next to the house. This is my uh, sanctuary. This is where I spend a lot of my time. We are working on the Grand Slam of North American Sheep. His client order at the moment is to create four different species of wild sheep, desert, dull, bighorn, and stone, all life-sized including the mountain habitat they live on. It's a two-year project. And each one of these is a challenge in itself. I've never sculpted sheep before, but now I am. Life-size, realistic, anatomically detailed, created with the lost wax technique. I cut, I cut the mannequin in foam. Here's my, here's my armature that I start with right here. 
I use steel rods for the legs. I then foam it with the blue foam, and I hot wax over it. I sculpt in a real hard, dense wax. And it affords me to put in a lot of detail. Bud's models are actual photographs from books and magazines. Bud's specialty, life-size bronzes, started by request from a client. He said, Bud, I'd like to have a life-size white tail. I've never done a life-size, but I, I said, it's not to say that I can't. My moose sells for $70,000. My deer are $34,000. His first effort at life-size art, a white-tailed buck, also mirrors his love of deer hunting. This buck took about eight months to bag. Is it for sale? When you're an artist, everything's for sale. Straight ahead, we go straight up hey. to help you learn to rock climb. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut, Coors Light, Star Bank, and by Alumacraft Boats. climbing continues to grow year after year. Have you ever had the desire to give it a try? Well, I'm here at Interstate State Park in Taylor's Falls, Minnesota to show you the ropes on how to get started. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Laura. Welcome to Taylor's Falls. Thank you. I'm ready to do some rock climbing today. Let's go. Have you ever climbed in a gym before? I've done some climbing in a gym, but I've not been outside on a real rock before, and I have to tell you, I'm a little intimidated. Yeah, some of these are pretty tall. <laughs> it's, it's best to learn inside. You can get a little more lessons before you come out and actually have to set up climbs yourself. You need to have some expertise at, at the climbing gym. But this is Taylor's Falls. It's one of four state parks that, we, that allow climbing in Minnesota. The other ones are Blue Mounds, Baptism, and Tedegich. Cool, and what do you need as far as like permits to go climbing if you're going to start at a state park? In the state parks, there's a, there's a volunteer permit system that you fill out, and it's basically so that they can keep track of how many climbers there are. I'm official. To start out, you'll need a harness, a chalk bag. We have um, white magnesium carbonate chalk. It helps your hands stick. Shoes, they have sticky rubber on the bottom of the shoes, and a helmet. You'll probably want to go out with a group, a crew, that will probably have the ropes and everything to set up. But eventually you'll want to get a rope and some gear to set up top anchors. So we can start out and say something like this. You should have no problem climbing it. Yeah, Jeff, doesn't look like it should be a problem at all. No, I don't think so. <laughs> you'll do just fine. All right, well, I guess we can go and gear up. Let's gear up. I'm a little nervous, Jeff, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You'll be tied in, you'll be super safe. All right, so what are we looking at here, Jeff? Well, I think we're gonna set up Kalemeister. <laughs> it's an easy one. This is, you, did you said this was easy? Yeah. Oh boy. Are there any tips to um, don't look down? Is that what your, is that a tip? Well, we set a top rope up. To set a top rope up, you put three anchors at the very top, and the rope goes up through the carabiner and down. You will tie into one end, and I will belay you from the other end. Okay. So as you go up, I pull the slack in. So if you fall, you're not gonna fall far. I won't go far. Let's keep it extra tight, okay. Jeff, extra tight. I would recommend <laughs> going up here. Ready to go. We'll see how many takes I need here. Over here. There you go. Nice. Perfect. Nice.
give rock climbing a try, because as they say, the best views come from the hardest climbs, and I can tell you, they're not lying. All right, here we go. Summer is the perfect time to learn how to rock climb. Head to our YouTube channel to watch this story for tips to get ready for your first climb. Still ahead, we go back in time to meet a very young casting champion. But first, a visit with an Aviation Hall of Famer, a guy with a soft spot for float planes. Closed captioning is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. ever had a chance to fly on a float plane, the experience will change you. My grandfather had a Cessna on floats for many years. Now, here in Minnesota, an aviator shares that passion. Ron Shera introduces you to Bruce Hansen. Dream trips, adventures of a lifetime. They often lift off Right here. And this fellow, Bruce Hansen, has watched dreams take off for nearly a half century right at his place, Surfside Seaplane Base, a Lino Lakes facility and one of the largest in the country. Who knew? A lot of our neighbors don't know we're here. Hansen and airplanes, turns out, were made for each other. A longing for flying ever since I was a kid when I used to crawl up in a tree to sail model airplanes out. I remember my first plane ride was in Alexandria, 12, 13 years old. We, we knew a guy at the airport there. He took us up for a ride, and that, was, that really hooked me. A few years later, Hansen had his private pilot license and a float plane rating. To me, a float plane meant you go to Canada. I got my float plane rating, and before the ink was dry on it, practically, I was on the way to Canada. <laughs> uh, within a week, I was in Churchill for the first trip. Hansen purchased the sea base operation in 1970 and quickly discovered airplanes can be more work than play. We normally have 45 to 60, somewhere in that area of, of airplanes based here. We do the float changeover. Any mechanical work they need is done here in our shop. He's very giving. He will give you the shirt off his back. He will help anybody, anytime. We are always running to do things for somebody, and he does it out of the goodness of his heart, not for a buck. Oddly enough, before operating a sea base, Hansen was a truck driver. The experience came in handy. I want to make sure we got gas in there. That would be really embarrassing to run out of gas. This is a, about an 86 Chevy. Yeah, it is homemade. Drove in one Saturday morning, and before the day was done, this is what we had. It works just great. Uh, okay. So what does this contraption do? There's right, nothing to it. What is it they say about the mother of invention? All for the love of float planes, which, by the way, Hansen still flies. Well, it's a good way to get to our place up by Detroit Lakes. So we have a place up there, and we fly up there. We've got a little lake there to land on. It's very handy. To me, flying has never gotten old, and one of the reasons is because there's lakes all over to land on. A 
great story about a great character, just what the Minnesota Bound podcast is all about. Join us each week for the stories behind the stories. You can find each episode anywhere you find podcasts. Coming up next, meet a young caster who will fish you right out of the boat. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Shields. Bent Creek Golf Club, Eden Prairie. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back to 1999. The year Ron Shera met a young angler with a special knack for fishing's trickiest skill. And before the contest started... On any given day, you're apt to find Tammy Helms at a neighborhood athletic club, honing her fishing skills. Whoa. That was another good one. When you're 14 years old and from Stillwater, Minnesota, that's not so unusual. Tammy's whole family is into fishing, especially Father Ron and younger brothers Randy, 10, and Brian, 11. But watch Tammy make a few casts, a flip, or a pitch, or a cast. And you begin to notice something. Tammy rarely misses the target. She takes aim, Choose her gum and bullseye. In fact, you're watching a national casting champion. Tammy is the first and only girl to qualify and win the 1996 Bassmaster Casting Kids Championship, an event held by BASS, the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. I was nervous, but not, I didn't really show it. <laughs> In fact, Tammy is a casting phenomenon. To qualify for the national title, she had to win state and regional casting competitions, beating all challengers, including kid brother Brian. Actually, the boys picked up the casting competition thing first, and she just kind of looked at them and said, I can do that. I don't know, we just help each other out, and because sometimes they tell me what I'm doing wrong, too. In the national competition, Tammy defeated four other finalists. More importantly, they were all boys. It would be like having your son or daughter be the quarterback at the Super Bowl. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic to watch those kids get up on stage in front of 22,000 people in the Coliseum and compete. It's, it's really special. And Tammy won easily. Out of a possible 150 points, she had 140. I don't know, I had confidence because I practiced a lot and I knew that I tried my best, so whatever I did. Now her college fund has a $5,000 deposit, and her room is adorned with ribbons and medals and trophies, all the result of her casting skills. Then this is but this is the big one right here. Yep. What's that say? National champion, and then... And with Tammy, she's very competitive, and if she decides she likes something, she goes for the win regardless. Which means Tammy is back What'd practicing. She already has won another state and regional contest and will be back to defend her national casting title. Are you a left? No, I'm right-handed, but I just always done it this way. Yeah, she's very, very good. Makes it look simple, which is the, the key to casting greatness, I would say. For me, the bullseye was, well, more elusive. He needs practice. <laughs> but to beat Tammy, practice probably isn't enough. You can cast just like that. Of course. <laughs> well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.